It's the 4th of July, America's Independence Day. In a small town in the far northern reaches of New York State, the obscure Republican candidate for the United States Senate, accompanied by his loyal spouse, is out garnering votes among the modest crowd. Come on, I need a hug. <laughs> OK, we're giving away hugs. Hugs for votes. Yeah. <laughs> Two. Meanwhile, in New York Harbor, on board the USS John F. Kennedy, watched by tens of millions of Americans, The Democratic candidate and her loyal spouse are being accorded a somewhat more formal welcome. In an orgy of patriotic symbolism, the Commander-in-Chief and his First Lady have come to celebrate America's birthday at the gateway to the land of the free. Of course, Hillary Clinton is not campaigning, not today. Today, she says, is not political. But what a grandstand for a candidate. What a crushing contrast with her opponent. Thank you. Try as he might, the Republican's chief strategist and spin master can't quite keep the envy out of his voice. Well, I think Mrs. Clinton's out on an aircraft carrier today being saluted, and Rick Lazio's out in parades all across uh, New York, meeting real people, talking to them. It's the story of the two different campaigns. How's everybody doing? Nice to see you. Frankly, we don't have any super carriers. We have to make two of regular parades, and we're happy with that. Rick Lazio is a little-known congressman from Long Island, drafted in by the Republican Party when Rudy Giuliani, the high-profile mayor of New York City, pulled out of the Senate race with prostate cancer. What else can we do? We sent you some money. Oh, what else thank can we you do? very much. Get, spread the word. Put a set yard sign up. Get a bumper sticker on. And Rick Lazio has a problem. I never even heard of Rick Lazio. He just came in out of nowhere. No, I swear. I swear I never heard of him. I never heard of him. As far as I'm concerned, he never did anything for us. Who's she running against? Rick Lazio is a Long Island congressman. Lazio, okay. Everyone's heard of Hillary Clinton. And with her fame comes money, buckets of it, for her campaign coffee. She's running in a state where registered Democrats outnumber Republicans two to one, and she's married to a president who's carried New York crushingly twice in eight years. So with all those advantages, this Senate race ought to be a lay-down misere for Hillary Rodham Clinton. But it isn't. All the polls are showing that her support is stuck at about 45%, and her almost unknown opponent is now at level pegging. Why should this be? Well, of course, it says something about New Yorkers and their distrust of outsiders. But what it's really talking about is the extraordinary level of fear and loathing that the Clintons as a couple, husband and wife, seem able to inspire in their many enemies. You'll hear it in the canyons of downtown Manhattan. There's nothing honest about the woman or about the man. I mean, they're, they're total liars and they're total uh, opportunists. They have no principles. And you'll hear it in the little towns that dot the vast hinterland of New York State, way up by the Canadian border, where Rick Lazio's bus, the so-called Mainstream Express, is plying from rally to rally. I don't trust her. I think, she, I think she's a liar, exactly. basically. She, she lies just like her husband. <laughs> just like her husband. Because why would she stay with him when he's a liar? I wouldn't stay with a husband that's a liar.
all the pundits and pollsters agreeing that Rick Lazio, the fresh-faced young congressman who no one's ever heard of, has got two things going for him. First, he's a New Yorker born and bred. We want Rick! We want Rick! Tell your mama, tell your pa, I'm going to send you back to Arkansas. Oh, yes, man. I'll just say that we don't need any outsiders to come in here and run New York. I'd rather see a Long Island guy come up here, represent us, and we can trust him, and that's why we're for this guy here. <laughs> yeah, that's all I get to say, Mr. And second, he is not Hillary Clinton. We have lived through some good times and some bad times, but in the end, it is our values that sustain us. In a million years, I wouldn't want anyone to represent me that didn't have those values didn't have a sense of character. I am one of you. If you ask those voters why they're supporting him, a plurality will say because they have anti-Hillary views. Uh, and her numbers show that while she is popular among a constituency, she's also unpopular among another constituency to the tune of about 40% of voters who just don't like her and never will. And I propose that it wouldn't matter if Muammar Gaddafi or Mother Teresa ran against Hillary Clinton, she'd still be stuck at 45%. Other pundits have used other metaphors, including a ham sandwich, a turkey, and a mannequin. They'd all do well against Hillary Clinton. So would you. <laughs> it's a full year since the venerable Democratic Senator for New York, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, drew the massed ranks of the nation's press to his upstate farm to endorse Hillary Clinton as his successor. I hope she will go all the way I mean to go all the way with her. I think she's going to win. I think it's going to be wonderful for New York. They asked her then, of course, why the wife of the governor of Arkansas should think she can represent the people of New York. I think it's a very fair question, and I fully understand people raising it. And I think I have some real work to do uh, to get out and listen and learn from the people of New York and demonstrate that... Uh, uh, what I'm for is maybe as important, if not more important, than uh, where I'm from. Thank you so much. And work she has. Upstate and downstate, week in, week out, working the crowds, hugging the babies, doing the hard yards that Americans demand of their politicians. And to all appearances, doing it well. Yes, it was a very big thrill. <laughs> Yeah, she's a very lovely person, and she's shorter than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that exciting? Very, 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 nice very nice lady. Very nice. Very nice. Very gracious woman. Well, it certainly was nice to see that she took time to come to Broome County and to be a part of our community for a day. And she's been here other times, so that speaks well for her. And if you believe her press secretary, admittedly a dangerous thing to do in any American election, she's even having a good time. I think she loves it. I mean, when you're uh, at an event like this where you've got 1,100 people uh, in an area that's typically Republican who've come out to see you, uh, you know, it doesn't get any better than that. Hi, how are you all? Nice to see you. What do you recommend today? Spinach. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to like spinach. I actually have a little She spent most of her adult life campaigning with one of the masters of the art. <laughs> do you also do the calypso in between oh, yeah. service? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Though she's never had Bill Clinton's magic ease with strangers, and though the Secret Service guards her every step of the way, step back for me. All right, take a step back. She is getting better. And then we had all the tall ships. They were so beautiful. Of course, everyone likes to meet a star in the flesh. What you're going to see how people would get moved to run away to see if they saw those. But not every star in the crush and the cameras can give a mother advice about her runaway daughter. It's tough, you know, it's tough. But I think it's also really important that you tell her that you think it's a mistake, but that you'll, you know, you'll love her, you'll be there for her. In a way that has the desired effect, at least for Hillary. I think she's wonderful. I think she's a great person and a great personality. And I think she'll do a great job. I don't think that's it. I think it's... And an hour later, she can neatly sidestep a hard-headed defense industry employee who asks which of three different combat aircraft she'll fight to fund. And I'd like to know which of these programs you support and why. Well, any that are designed, made, and built in New York. 
<laughs> but for all her hard work and her skills as a campaigner, Hillary's polls are exactly where they were a year ago. I want to represent New York, obviously. You won't, of course, get much of an explanation from the candidate. Hello, everybody. This is like old time. She does give the occasional press conference. Back on the trail. How are you? But despite the strained jollity, she's suspicious of the press. Well, I thought, you know, since we're all together, we could have a little chorus. How is it that this virtually unknown contender is, is, is running level with you in the polls already? Uh, how do you account for that? It's a competitive uh, election. And, you know, there are big differences between Democrats and Republicans. And uh, um, I have to work hard to earn the vote of every New Yorker I can reach. And that's what I'm going to intend to do for the rest of the time, as I have been doing for the last year. But do you think it's the case that you've already run up against the ceiling, that it's going to be very hard for you getting more votes? I think that uh, I'll win in November. and. Uh, we just have to get there between now and then, and it's going to be a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, uh, talking about what I would do in the Senate, and that's what I think will uh, be of most interest to the people of New York. How many of you have known somebody who has had... Of course, it's the TV ads that do most of the talking. How many of you have known people like that? And Team Hillary makes lots of them. I believe it's important to tell you where I stand and what I'll do. Now Hillary's outlined a specific plan to bring... Ads expensively produced to look like amateur video concentrate on promoting Hillary's issues. Hillary's fighting to make sure our children can build their futures here. The state Senate just passed tougher penalties for hate crimes. Hillary fought for the bill. Rick Lazio was opposed. And even more ads, cheaply produced to look like teletype, examine Rick Lazio's record. Lazio, the more you know, the more you wonder. Or as Lazio indignantly claims, distorted. I understand on the other side, they're running scared right now. They're getting a little desperate. They're on their, their sixth negative commercial in two weeks. And I know there are some folks that would love to drag me down in the mud with them. But you know what? I won't go there. I think this is going to be a really, really good story. You know what the name of it is? Hello, Toes. Both sides are crafting campaign fairy stories. Lazio's spin masters have cast their man as the positive prince and negative Hillary as the wicked witch. I'll slip off your socks and shoes, squish into the muddy ooze. Ew, gross. But Rick Lazio's Mr. Nice Guy image is about to be sullied. The traveling press has just discovered a Lazio fundraising letter which says that Bill and Hillary Clinton have disgraced their posts and shamed America. Hop me to the closet door. So who's getting down in the mud now, the New York press want to know. And Rick Lazio starts squirming. Are you aware of this? It sounds like you're not fully aware that this letter was sent out. Well, I mean, you know, letters... I mean, I mean, letters... I mean, letters some get, get passed by me, you know, it's like a quick read of some things. So I just think it's incredibly unfair to try and characterize the message of the campaign by a phrase in the solicitation letter. I'm not the one. Hillary Clinton's the one who's out there uh, trying to distort my record, attack me every day. I'm not the one. The truth is, Rick Lazio doesn't need to attack Hillary Clinton's image. There's a whole industry doing it for him. Walk into any bookshop in New York and you can buy a whole slew of Hillary biographies. Almost all of them portray her as a most unpleasant woman, driving in her ambition, dogmatic in her politics, deceitful in her attempts to worm her way out of the scandals that she and her husband have left in their wake. The author of The First Partner, New Yorker Joyce Milton, claims to be a Democrat. But for her, the Clintons are classic narcissists. Narcissists uh, are people who tend to be indignant at any criticism. And that does seem to be a feature of the Clintons. They feel that they're not traditional politicians. They're policy professionals, uh, technicians, if you will, uh, who are doing us a favor by being in politics. When they're caught doing anything, instead of uh, apologizing and cutting their losses, they're indignant. I mean, I think that's... Uh, really the uh, main reason why so many people who know them well have soured on them. That indignation was on full display just last week 
when Hillary lashed out against her latest attacker. You're darn right it's not true. It's absolutely false. And I'm just tired of this kind of politics. In this case, some people may feel that the indignation is justified. It was provoked by this book, whose author is a reporter for the National Enquirer, one of the sleaziest tabloids in America. One passage was widely leaked before the book even hit the stands. It alleges that 26 years ago, in the aftermath of young Bill Clinton's failed run for Congress in Arkansas, a furious Hillary Rodham turned on one of his campaign aides, a man called Paul Frey, and hurled racial abuse at him. It's unlikely that the ultra-PC Hillary Clinton would call anyone a Jew bastard. And Paul Frey is not even Jewish. Besides, some years ago, Frey wrote the Clintons a letter in which he admitted that he'd falsely defamed them in the past. But out in the smart suburbs of Long Island, where Republican voters cluster in their waterside mansions, the allegation has found fertile ground. Just ask the parents of the Bayshore girls softball team as they watch their champion batter demolish the opposition. She's proven over and over that you can't trust her. I think this whole thing that just blew up in her face uh, with the whole Jewish comments and all that stuff, when they have three people that were eyewitnesses and then she turns around and denies it. Run, 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 run. People don't believe it. I think that she did say it. I think there's a real nasty side to her. But then when she's interviewed or the camera's on her, the smile comes on and all that's here. But there are some people for whom Hillary can do no wrong. In a riverside cafe on the banks of the Hudson, in uptown Manhattan, where the tourists seldom venture, the political elite of Harlem gathers to raise funds to memorialize America's first black congressman. Once again, we welcome you. Enjoy the music, the food, and the lovely people. None of these Harlem movers and shakers could care less about Whitewater or Travelgate or Monica Lewinsky. They're unambiguously for Hillary. Everything has its origin, and of course it's her husband. He has really been approachable, and he has really embraced the black communities throughout the country uh, by hiring us, by thinking in, of, in terms of our needs. So it's trickled down, or trickled up, to uh, Hillary. But can support in Harlem and Brooklyn and Queens be turned into votes? Hillary needs a huge turnout here to counteract the Republican majority in the wealthy suburbs. If she were running against the abrasive Rudy Giuliani, the mayor whose police force is regarded on these streets as an occupying army, there would have been no problem. But now? Well, it's a very good question. Uh, I knew people who were going to raise from the dead to come out and vote against Giuliani, uh, blacks, of course. And uh, now some of the, the thrill is gone. <laughs> Besides, it's summertime in New York City. People have better things to do just now than worry about a Senate race that's been going on for a year already and has three months still to run. You know, look, it's only July. There's going to be a lot more of this. Just get ready. And I'm going to continue to do what I've done for a year, which is to talk about the issues and to run a campaign on issues. But insist though she may, this particular election is hardly about issues at all. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? It's a referendum on Hillary Rodham Clinton about how many love her. What is it we like about her? We like everything about her. She's... Mrs. Clinton is okay. She it's does fine. a good job. She does a good job so far. Doesn't matter where she come from, as long as she's running. And how many hate her? She's a horror show. Hillary the horror show is her nickname. United States senators are elected for a six-year term, and incumbents are rarely defeated. If Hillary wins in November, America may well have to cope with the Clintons, husband and wife, 
love story or horror show for a long, long time to come.